everybody. Bless you. Larry Charles. This is another episode of Games Recap. Every morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Yeah, good morning, guys. We are bringing gaming news from a game developer perspective. Man, we are looking super bright all of a sudden today. Um, I can't tell the difference. But anyways, uh, I am Brandon Pham. This is my co-host, Larry Charles. And uh, if you're joining us live, thank you very much on twitch.tv forward slash blue underscore champs. If you're watching this after the fact, that's okay too. You're watching us on our youtube.com forward slash blue champs along with our other shows. If you are supporting us, thank you very much on our patreon.com forward slash blue champs. It's literally uh, keeping the lights on and we are looking super bright for some reason. I got to figure out why. I think because of the camera exposure. Uh, well, I can take a look. Uh, but, uh, maybe go to, okay. <laughs> I am too. Oh my God. Now that camera is super close, but this is the fun. This is the fun that you tune in for to see how our cameras slightly shift day to day, how we mess up day to day live. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And, uh, if you are in luck for a new look, especially with a shirt, with our faces on it, go to our bluechance.com forward slash merch uh, to grab any of that. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's better. We are looking bright though. Anyways, uh, so let's go ahead and go to today's topic. The news. The news. The news. Who's in the hot seat today? Sony Microsoft teams. Oh, okay. Sony Microsoft team up. Oh, yeah, this is a this was announced like weeks ago, but today, uh, you know, um, the the CEO of Microsoft actually said that it was Sony's idea mm -hmm. that uh, they should team up together to create a cloud service, much like uh, Stadia, uh, for future gaming. Right. So cloud streaming is a thing the mm -hmm. console makers are aware mm -hmm. even though they're coming out with hardware that streaming will play a huge factor yeah. in the future of gaming and so uh to battle a titan such as google sony reached out to all their uh, competitors and partners alike to see what was the best chances they have to make this thing work and Microsoft and Sony together might actually go be able to go toe to toe with someone like Google. Well, I look at that because Sony wasn't going to do it themselves. No, there's no way that <laughs> Sony could have no, done it. And Google had already put their bets down on doing it themselves for their own thing. They've created a competitor. Yeah. So I think their only shot was to to partner with somebody who had infrastructure and technology available to do right. something. I like mean, that. Sony did buy Gakai, uh, G A K K E I. Yeah right a long time ago to help with their streaming push and that was when the rumor started where the clouds gaming was going to become a thing yeah started all the way back then so they're they're coming in and obviously was that like 2011 somewhere around then some some pretty pretty early yeah so they're coming in as a mutual partner right they're not really just leaning on microsoft there's a there's a mutual relationship between microsoft and sony here yeah and I think well, I guess what's smart about it is them pulling their resources together, even though they are direct competitors in yep. the PlayStation marketplace, having this avenue available for them to compete, they see it as a mutually beneficial way for them to continue to make revenues in an area that they think is forecasted or their yeah. forecasting is going to be a thing. Yeah. Uh, what? Is some people are we on mute or something? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I, I got a response back from the uh, podcast. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. He says he has another video conference at that time. Okay. Uh, so uh, we should be looking at this and seeing how the tide has been shifting. Because for generations, Microsoft and Sony have been pitted against each other. Yeah. Like direct competitors. Like we're this not, would have been unheard of PS2, PS3 era. Yeah. It was, uh, it's unprecedented that it actually uh, teamed up. Because their internal teams mm -hmm. didn't even know about the information like the, like the PlayStation team okay. didn't even know about this until they saw it in the news. And that kind of put pumped the brakes like where they had to hit up with the, the heads of the divisions to be like, what's going on? Mm. Are we like emerging <laughs> or something? Is something going on here? Because it was a very sudden announcement that no one, Ladies it wasn't, yeah, it was like at the very top level Ladies above pay grades. Yeah. The PlayStation one. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> So uh, it's interesting to see how this will unfold because both 
uh, consoles have shown their cards in terms of hardware. It's the same type of hardware, same type of GPU. It's basically the same system yeah. with a different name on it. Uh, they haven't really gone too far on what their streaming plan uh, streaming plans are. The Game Pass is probably the earliest way of uh, saying that. I mean, I think digitally both guys are killing it, right? Because like, yeah. I first loved what they were doing with the PlayStation Plus or Game, not the Games Pass at the time, but I think it was Xbox Games with Gold, give you like free digital downloadable games once a month, you get two or three. Yeah. What's good about that was it was the setup for where things are going right now. People are getting much more, you're getting a free taste, well, free taste at having a full game in your digital library. Yeah. Getting used to like, oh, okay, this isn't so bad. Yeah. I download it, it's on my console, it's available. I keep it as long as I have this, I can, Keep, I don't have to worry about hard drive space because I can always re-download it if I want to. They keep a cloud library, and then from that cloud library, I just put data on my console whenever I want to play X game. So that was like the setup of the ecosystem that they're trying to push moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I'm like totally down with like all digital now. And I'm the guy who like I used to prize like my game boxes mm -hmm. being on my bookshelf mm -hmm. and being able to see how many I had collected. Those days are over. I, I don't give a C R A P S H I T about it. Right, right, right. No, I'm exactly the same. I'm not, I'm not, I never really celebrated the DVD era where I had boxes of DVDs to tr as trophies, basically. Uh, even with books, I was the first one to kind of jump into ebooks. Mm -hmm. I remember like one of my leads back at 2K was kind of complaining about how, like, oh, I love the feel of books, you know, it's, I don't like how ebooks are like, you don't have that, that yeah. feeling and tangibility. I was like, that you're dumb, dude. The whole, <laughs> point of a book is the knowledge within it yeah. who cares about where it's being delivered so obviously you don't like books that much to not even see the well, it's, yeah, i guess he's the like, real source of knowledge he, i'm kind of in his boat and what i can say in defense is i do care about the knowledge but yeah. also the reading experience right and so he's saying that like he just doesn't like the tap to swipe the page experience sure. right. versus but he still wants the knowledge yeah, yeah. i don't know but at I least I t you know what I told him I told him to get one of those get a new leather book uh, iPhone cover <laughs> or just have a book in one of the other hand and just feel it <laughs> there's a solution to everything man so yeah in that very much same way uh, I am inviting with open arms mm. this streaming attitude mm. right uh, we've done a few games cat freak before where people were complaining about how indie developers might get the short end of the stick with everyone moving over we dissected that we yeah. broke it down surprisingly there's still a lot of people with the misconception thinking that this is going to destroy the indie market yeah. i don't know how this is just a this is just a delivery method it's a delivery method it, that's all and it's going to happen yeah so as indie developers you got to be the most adaptable yeah. to change and uh and yeah, in the very much same way, I welcome that Microsoft and Sony uh, definitely see Google as a threat mm -hmm. to kind of uh, disrupt uh, their their console business. Um, having having that type of platform, their knowledge in the streaming game, uh, you know, they're gonna stand a tougher chance mm -hmm. against Sony and Microsoft because they actually understand the game business. Mm -hmm. Everything that Stadia has been announcing just showcased, to me at least, that uh, they do not understand the gaming business at all. The pricing point, it's supposed to be a streaming hardware, but they're packaging it with $150 hardware. It's like, what are you talking about? The whole idea is that I can go on YouTube, right, and play yeah, games. And just play through it. Why are you selling me anything? <laughs> Why are you selling me anything? A controller anything? at the most, like a controller interface to log into some sort of... Wow, they yeah they could that could have been the free console finally of the like hey do you have a cell phone cool here's your games hey do you have an iPad cool here's your games hey smart TV cool here's your games they were that close to doing it that way yeah and it feels like it's a misstep they should have had like a promotional like how how much are those controllers to be made at this point I think they're seventy dollars for each com uh, controller I believe yeah but even if they took the Rumble know. Pack out you know what I mean like whatever well, the Xbox controller hasn't changed in yeah. terms of looks and, and buttons right you know what i mean for it to cost 70 dollars out the gate let's see i want to see how much so larry's looking it up 
It just seems yep, kind of odd. Bucks, $69. For it just seems controller. odd. Like, why can't you just package it with a PS1 controller? Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like, give me a free controller so that if I want to play on my computer with a controller, I have a controller, right? Yeah. Um, is it a requirement to have that package? Let me look. I, so just in, just in scrolling for those controllers right there, uh, I was seeing some stuff like $800 Founder Edition or $789 for this and that, this and that. And it was I'm hoping those were third-party advertisements for Stadia stuff because Lord have mercy if no, Stadia this, has anything to do with that price point. From <laughs> what I see, it's on their official like website. Right? Yeah. Something like that. Well, $129 for their Founder Edition. There you go. Uh, what I'm trying to look for is to see if it's a requirement to have it. The controller or yeah. the Founders Edition box and all that? The Founders Edition box. I think you're going to need some sort of box. I think that's just going to be part of the thing. The Assassin's Creed demo. Well, you know, I don't know. I can't verify. I don't want to speak out of my Well, the whole idea is that they, they had all the hardware is being streamed. Yeah. Right? They have it in-house. All the heavy processing, at least. Yeah, all you need is an internet connection. Yeah. That's the whole idea of streaming games. Where's the connection? So I think it might be a preference. More, edition, more... If it's two controllers and a charging hub, then I don't feel so bad. But I doubt that that's what it is. I haven't looked at Stadia stuff. This is, the, the, this is where it's stupid right now. Like, it's... We're pretty tech savvy, mm -hmm. and I'm having a hard time understanding: Do I need this or not? <laughs> what are you messaging me? Because the marketing right yeah. now is just failing me hard. So then, imagine just the average consumer at that point. Yeah, from from what I see, it feels like uh, it's ten dollars, right, a month yeah. for the service as part of the Founders Edition. It's three months for ten dollars a month, including the founders of this. So the number actually jumps up. I, I gotta, I gotta look at the pricing, man, because this is this is confusing the hell out of me. I keep well, getting like missed messages. Well, here's here's something that's worth said. Then, like, if Google is setting themselves up for a flop, assuming that they move forward with the same pricing difficulties, with the market not completely understanding how or exactly what they're getting out of this or the market not being ready for this, right? The way that Google's doing it. The Microsoft Sony team up, like would they win by default? Just because they're like, hey, we just even have a basic mm -hmm. regular product that is not three tiers, no founders edition, no none of that. It's just, this is how our game streaming is gonna work. We're gonna do cross platform play as well. You know, like they could set themselves up for a, an awesome one, two punch that Stadia might not be able to recover from. Excuse me. Especially knowing that they actually have first party games on their consoles and i have no idea who's going to go first party for stadia i don't even think that it's a thing except for indie well this is where microsoft and sony is so so such a killer combo because they understand the game business they've been in it for a long time they know the pricing point and what gamers are comfortable with and skip all the jargon man i'm i've been browsing their site like every time i go on there i'm more and more confused it's like so do i need the founders edition or do i not and if that's the case, then why do you put that as your front page? You should just straight up say, like, hey, here's log online, yeah. like Netflix. Here's your login name. Here, how it's, you know, this is exactly yeah. how it works as you advertise, right? But I'm instead greeted with the Founders Edition. I'm looking in the Founders Edition. It's a controller with a Chromecast with three months of service. Yeah, it's that like, sounds about right. Yeah. You know, it's like, what's well, come on, man. Like, Chrome, like, Chromecast is just powerful enough to store apps and to give your TV smart TV capability if it didn't have it. Yeah. yeah like it's, it, it, that makes sense to me. If it's, if it's that, then that makes sense. I'm pretty sure if you want the 4k gaming experience, you're going to need the Chrome Chromecast thing. Yeah. But if you're fine with 1080p, you probably won't need it. Yeah. That's a guess though. I don't know why that would be the relationship. Cause like YouTube sends me 4k video on the same pipe that it sends me 1080 video. So uh, it's mostly a, thing that makes your tv a smart tv but then yeah. most tvs are smart tvs anyways that These are 4k days, yes. yeah. that have 4k capabilities so does that mean i can skip this whole thing yeah that's a good question <laughs> all right google start releasing some tutorial commercials to tell people exactly how <laughs> you this have to release to tutorials how to play a game right how to set up a, a system to play a game you you failed 
for a streaming platform. It should be as easy as you advertise. Like, yeah. I go on YouTube, play a game. Do you have a good controller? No. You need to hook up a keyboard and mouse. Come on, people. What's going on? I don't know, but... They always do this, man. They come up with a great idea, and they just muddle it up. Just fumble fumble at the, at the, the heart, touchdown. At the heart of this one specifically, right? Like, I know they have great talented engineers and visionaries at Google. Like I've seen some of the resumes that have joined the uh, Stadia project because I was following it when they were, you know, asking a friend of ours if that person wanted to join. Yeah. And so since then, like, I was like, okay, so let me see who's involved to give me an idea of like the success or the potential that they might be building a full on console. Or right. I was trying to, you know, just get whatever information I could. What I can say is that like, you got to bring in people that live and breathe gaming. Yeah. In your game development, you got to bring in the engineers, the designers, the the artists, the technical artists. You got to bring in game developers to work with you to consult when you're talking about building game development technologies. Because otherwise, if you're building a product for a theoretical customer instead of an actual customer, you're going to be way off. You're going to miss the mark. It, it just always happens. Remember when Homer Simpson designed the car? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's just so, so much factors he that... just like, oh, this is what the people want, and he didn't talk to the people. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just wondering... It's supposed to come out in a couple months. Mm-hmm. Really? Oh, yeah, November, huh? November. This year. The sure. hype definitely has died down. Uh, They're not giving me anything new. They're giving me a new way to do something, but like... Yeah. They're not giving me access to new stuff that I didn't have access to before. Yeah. And that's a huge... Well, look at the market they're going for. They're yeah. going for people that have a console, right? You're selling to people that already have a console. They already have a thing, yeah. Hey, you like what is your video messaging? games? Here, use this to play video games. <laughs> yeah. I, I've already got a thing. Yeah. It's just, that doesn't, so if Sony tomorrow comes up with a firmware update... And saying that, hey, now you can actually, uh, as long as you have your PlayStation on, well, they, you they, can, yeah. You know they have that. They have that, yeah, right? Yeah. That is essentially what Google is saying to you right now. Yeah. Is I already have that. What I want is that I don't need a console, yeah. right? But who are those people out there? Who are those people who don't have a console but are hardcore gamers enough to play Assassin's Creed? Right? Yeah. It's a weird niche super niche i totally forgot about the playstation streaming thing that you could like as long as your console is on at home and you have good internet connection both home and where you're playing Mm -hmm. you can play your ps4 games just remotely i forgot all about that because i never use it but but that's another part of sony and microsoft where they're bad at marketing that part they don't make that a feature man i would make a commercial right now talking about like yeah to really kill the steam right but like what microsoft and sony is setting up to do is that you don't need a console yeah. so that when playstation 5 comes out or xbox or whatever next comes out they're like hey you can buy the hardware yeah or you can subscribe now for ten dollars a month and play all the games that you want to play uh, exclusive mostly right you yeah. want to play the last of us the halos the gears of wars right uh you can do that right now without a console yeah so that's appealing but the google stadia thing is like hey if you don't have a microsoft console if you don't have sony console and very small chance you don't have the playstation uh now or whatever what is it called playstation playstation plus playstation plus the xbox Xbox game pass game pass right look into our system it's such a like so many barriers of entry to introduce this new console i think they're not really coming out with an exclusive either so i think the market for a a stadia sadly exists and then doesn't exist at the same time and here's here's what i mean by that yeah i think domestically when i think of the united states or when i think of like the major game playing markets right you sony just sold 100 million playstation 4s right yeah they just pushed 100 million playstation 4s microsoft obviously has not as much but a significant market share in comparison to google currently having zero right yeah they're not i mean all these people have been playstation 2 3 4 xbox one two or whatever the xbox numbers are 360 yeah. xbox whatever a lot of these people who have consoles right now have probably had a console before have they're already in their ecosystem right yeah 
Stadia, I don't think, is going to be able to attack those people and get them to convert. They might get some of them to adopt additionally. Where I think that the market opportunities are is that, like, where are the people who would love to play games but who don't have the console, who don't have the console money? They don't have the 500 bucks plus $70 each game. They might have $100, you know what I mean? $100 is easier for them to think of. Plus, they know that this essentially... This stadia is like upgrade proof, I'm assuming, for generations, right? Because yeah. as long as people are okay with 4K gaming being the thing, 4K 60, whatever, you don't need to buy a stadia 2, a stadia 3, a stadia 4. They're just going to keep processing and doing all the hard work off site. So essentially, what Google is trying to say is like, you buy this and you'll be done for a long time. Yeah. There's probably markets where that idea would be great. Like you go to China, you go to. I don't want to use third world or just assume poor, but just communities that aren't able to spend a $500 investment, $400 investment on Microsoft or Sony right now and yeah. then $70 each game, $60 each game. Mm-hmm. Go to those markets where, you know, like, hey, like I've got 100, like I could do that. But here's the problem. Those areas, do they have the internet infrastructure to then support mm-hmm. what Stadia would need to actually be able to develop or to give them a, a High fidelity gaming experience, and that's that's where it's not ready. Yeah, it's that's not ready right now. Stuff. Even with internet being better, not everyone has like thirty five megabits yeah. per second upload. Plus. Cell phones are <laughs> getting there, but yeah. But not that's like the maximum it. that I have for my internet package right now, and that's not what everybody has. Yeah. So imagine in other countries, right? That yeah. are very limited. Japan and Korea probably don't care, but. Other than that, I could see a lot. But they did a the study in those countries to see how they, uh, if they're excited about streaming or not, and Mm. most aren't. Mm. Like those countries, no one is interested in streaming their game. It's not even a a fad. I would say if you have internet speed so fast that streaming the episode versus just downloading it and then watching it is insignificant of an experience because you're not saving any time per se then I can see why streaming doesn't mean shit to you, right? Like if you, because like Korea, Japan, such fast internet, they're like, hey, I want to download that episode. Double click, it's downloaded. It's yeah. available. It's yeah. there. Yeah. Streaming only means something to people who don't have that level of internet speed. Right. right? I mean, for the people who can afford it and once it's uh, stabilized and the foundation is there and everything, it's exciting because game as game developers, you can go with the ultimate rig mm-hmm. and have people play that version um all the time Mm -hmm. right right now everyone's restricted to playstation quality or xbox quality which is lower than pc quality but if you're telling me you can stream it to your tablet with Mm -hmm. a controller and play at 4k quality all the time at 60 frames per second that is very exciting for a game developer because now the veil has been lifted Mm -hmm. Uh, limitation wise, you can't go too bonkers because you know you still have to run it on your own working workstation, right? Uh, but at least the limitation is 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 cleared enough yeah. where you don't have to worry about that if it becomes uh, the standard, right? Right now it isn't the standard because you're still gonna always uh, develop for the lowest Q, mm-hmm. which is whatever the PlayStation, the next PlayStation, the next Xbox, right? So even if you have that availability that you can scale up to, that's fine. But you're still always developing to the bottom. bottom. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it would have to be 10 years down the line where streaming becomes the thing for gaming where you can finally, every developer can, can go bonkers with it. So then with all of this said about our predictions about the difficulties with Stadia and the difficulties with internet infrastructure and download speeds, plus the international survey, do they want it or not? Let's talk about Sony and Microsoft coming together to do it anyway, because obviously Sony, based in Japan, obviously they probably have better view into what the local Japanese market would be interested in or want, I would hope, I would imagine. Um, Them doubling down on streaming, partnering with Microsoft to offer this, maybe they see something that we don't see, or, I mean, let's talk about how they could be setting themselves up for success, even knowing that we have, like, kind of a bleak, I guess, next five year view of like game streaming uh what is what is the long play here for sony or microsoft what do you think their long play is i think those guys started uh with the xbox game pass right i think the game pass have shown a lot of interest um and they're lowering the console 
um, exclusivity, sure. right? Right now, you can get the same Game Pass on Xbox as the PC. Yeah. Very exciting. PlayStation has been going with their... Uh, they started that whole program, sort of, right? Mm-hmm. With uh, the streaming games every yeah. month, right? You get a free game They're every the month. They're the first I remember to do it, I believe. So PlayStation, PlayStation Plus. So they, but uh, they haven't shown anything like Xbox Game Pass yet. But they're, isn't there? They're working on something. They're working on yeah. something. But the PlayStation Gold, as I can, uh, what I think of it is mostly just free games every month. So it's, it's with PlayStation, uh, with Xbox Game Pass. That's like a library kind of system okay. where like you're paying to have access to all of this content for free whenever you want. Right. Uh, games with or. Games with Gold is more in line with what PlayStation Plus is doing, which is like, hey, because you have this, you can have this game for free. Like, you can literally, this is yours forever. As long as you have a subscription. As long as you have a subscription. So once you stop paying for subscription, that's gone? That I don't know. I've actually, I've just, my PlayStation Plus is auto, so yeah. I've never not been without it since I bought it. So I don't know if, like, I were to stop PlayStation Plus if I would or would not have access to the games that I owned when I... I believe I still would, to be honest. I think so. So the library because will still a, be there when you come back. I believe back. so. I don't know for sure. Because all it does is it gives me a different price from the store. Like it says, oh, you're a gold member, so your price is zero, zero, zero. So then yeah. I download it. Yeah. And then it, it, I get the receipt and everything that PlayStation Store says, thank you for your purchase. Because of that part of the ecosystem being that way, I believe even if I canceled my gold, it would still say that I had purchased this game on such and such a date and I own it. So I believe I, believe I would still keep it. Yes. So if I were to think of the next steps, what they figured out a long time ago is that their hardware does not matter. Mm-hmm. Only, it only matters when they have an exclusive game, yeah. right? Their first party games are the reasons why they're selling the boxes. Yeah. It is with their, in their interest that streaming does take off because now they have a monthly revenue stream, mm-hmm. right? Uh, that they're already showing some semblance of with their services right now. But also, they won't be in the hardware business anymore, which is a you know day one loss type of business, right? With little, if any, profit margins within the five, five to ten years, yeah. right? So having that kind of exit strategy is working in their favor to think about like, hey, you know, if this does catch on, we'll be there and ready to go, because uh, the hardware business is tough. Yeah. Uh, and they're probably in the best positions to do so because if we look at PlayStation alone, all those PlayStation Two ones, mm-hmm. finally a solution. Uh, they're, they, I mean, they've had some some of that success with their streaming, right? They, yeah. you, you get access to their old catalogs. Yep. Right? So if you're on Xbox Game Pass or whatever, you can play 360 games, you can play Xbox One games, and I'm assuming. When things move over to Scarlet, and Scarlet is the thing, you'll be able to play Scarlet games. So that's future proof. Maybe not a lot right, right. away, but and, and that's great because that's like, a huge library. Yeah, that's yeah, it's yeah a that's one. that's a library that Stadia does not have. When you move from house to house, you don't have a huge bookshelf anymore. You yeah. just have a console box. Yeah, this is where I see Stadia not being able to last mm. because once PlayStation and Xbox enter that game. Yeah. Where's your ten dollars gonna go to the Stadia with an unproven team that's never been in the game making business or every attempt mm-hmm. out inside of tech outside of Google and YouTube right has failed yeah. right or would you if you're a gamer a hardcore gamer right because the hardcore gamers are the ones that are gonna adapt this source you're probably gonna go with the sure and tried thing I think Google's problem in general from where I stand is like forced disruption has not seemed to work for them no. organic disruption has right so like the google search engine they made a search engine and they wanted to make a super simple interface with like look just type in what you want and like just the relationship between people and search and how they did it was so unique that theirs just grew and theirs was the one that was adopted and supported but they had a search engine just like yahoo lycos hotbot whatever other search engines were around when Google was coming out, right? Right. Um, Web crawler, all those names that you don't even know anymore. But every attempt after that was like, I feel like, hey, they're doing this, so we wanna do the same thing. We're gonna like try to force, 
like our method to be popular because now we have resources now we are google so now we can just make this thing and it's just going to work through yeah. brute force yeah and i think all of their brute force attempts at disruption have just been terrible yeah. because it didn't start from like a a need that existed it started from a we want to do this thing that people are doing and we want to do it our way we want to do it better we have the money so we're gonna so i get like as a businessman sure you got to find products you got to make stuff it just seems like whenever they've tried to force the disruption to force like the force the adoption rate to force people to yeah yeah you have to do it this way we made our own google plus we made uh google what was the like their document their online wave google wave and we like all, google glass and like all this stuff and it's just like nah man you you guys are missing the bar every time because your execution you like give up on it here's my theory here's my theory yeah, right. on every tech company in silicon valley when they were small and nimble and hungry dude very innovative yeah as soon as they start giving those unlimited vacations <laughs> and cafeterias dude I've been on those campuses, man. Yeah. I've seen what these guys do when they work. Yeah. A bunch of millennials walking around just pretty much eating all day, right? It's gone. As soon as you, it's all about maintaining the gravy train at that mm. point. How do we pump him at more advertising, right? Yeah. This is something that, you know, textbook, you can be taught and, 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 and grow, right? Yeah. When it comes to innovation, you know, that's basically taking a step back and only a few people can actually, uh, drive that forward and drive that vision right but this is where facebook right google apple mm. like, like, name any big tech company in silicon valley right now that is still on top of their game where they're pushing the industry forward netflix is the only one i can think of is the only only one that you can think of because they're still relatively small and nimble yeah and they're and coincidentally, they don't believe in the cafeteria. Mm. They don't believe in any of that pool table recreational area. They're all I've have I have friends that work there, yeah. and their whole model over there is like we're driven by money. Mm -hmm. All right, you do have unlimited vacation, but when you come in the office, you come to work. Yeah. Right. If you need the time extra off, right, you go ahead and ask for that, and just take your time mm -hmm. off. But the, the office is not a play. Yeah play place it's not a playground so don't don't fuck around here and they get paid really well no, netflix I, people I mean, are paid top salaries top dollars all their employees but it's a dog eat dog world in that workplace because every every um year the lowest uh lowest performers or 10 percent gets laid off that's not fair get fired that's bro. not fair I, I i don't like that at all but it's peer review right it's uh it's completely peer review that's even worse yeah but that feeds into it but there's a model to it that actually works against the the fatness that's happening in silicon valley right mm. it's the opposite attitude from all the other tech companies sure and it's they've been thriving and growing and they've become a force and everybody outside of Silicon Valley is trying to copy their model. Hence yeah. the streaming services, Google yeah. Stadia, PlayStation, Microsoft. Everybody wants a $10 a month service that is completely digital. Yeah. No hardware. Isn't that insane? Digital. Like, yes, they actually spend money for content, mm -hmm. right? But no one's UPSing anything. Yeah. No, you don't have no to buy for store, no warehouse, no nothing, right? How, how do they still do DVD stuff? Can you still rent DVDs? I think there is still, is there still some shit. very small percentage <laughs> though. I haven't seen a red, a red, uh, DVD flyer in a mailbox. And I don't know how long, at least, at least eight years. I feel like, yeah. You got a comment? Yeah. Well, the comment from, uh, tones to he's basically agreeing with us. He's saying all the web based office stuff. I mean, Google, mm -hmm basically took Microsoft office and make it, mm -hmm. <laughs> made it online. And, uh, and a lot of businesses up there don't have great ideas anymore mm -hmm. because it, it, the type of people that you invite, right. They're driven by luxuries and comfortability. Yeah. Are those the type of people that can be creative in a struggle? No. Mm -hmm. Right. Think about it. Right. The type of people that, are driven to work to the bones until they come up with something completely new, mm -hmm. right? Are not the types that would hang around in the cafeteria <laughs> and, and gab play all day. And yeah, play ping yeah. pong, right? But those are the 
the perks, yeah. right? Where tech companies in Silicon Valley are constantly trying to advertise to potential employees. It's it's interesting to like to say the the perk of your job is relaxation opportunities. Um, and why that's why most people move yeah. around, yeah. And so I I definitely appreciate like a good quality of life balance. I don't have a problem if like I know that I'm going to trade eight hours of like core work and like collaboration with a lunch break in between. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm not shoveling coal into a steam engine. I'm right. not like right. doing some like backbreaking type of labor. I'm doing right. smart or type or yeah. development and collaboration. I wouldn't mind like a focus of like work your eight hours and then go enjoy your life. You're get paid well. You're in a nice area. Your kids are fine. Yeah. I think that's cool. I don't have a problem with that. I, I definitely could see how somebody could get comfortable or take advantage of the like the job that makes so much that it's so comfortable. Of course. It's so comfortable. Yeah. You want to keep that going. It's like, hey, advertising. All right, let's keep that going. Yeah. Right. Right. How do we keep this lifestyle going? But it's the, not. It's not at a place where like, how do I bring this up to another level? The drive to innovate is different. I think you see your life differently, and how you relate to your customers or consumers is is very different as well. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I could see. I could see why they have some struggles in in those areas. You're like attracting talent by saying like, hey, look how much you don't have to work. Yes. <laughs> just, and it's uh, it's a trend. Yeah. Like in Silicon Valley, everyone's exiting uh, that place now and going to Austin, Texas, which is a booming mm, tech boom. industry, right? Yeah. And a lot when of money goes further and you get the same salary. Yeah. I, I and a lot it. of innovators are going there because, yeah, there is a culture um, that's shifting San Francisco area mm. right now. They're pushing out locals. You're getting a lot of the same people. Yeah diversity even though like everyone's pushing diversity now but is it really mm. if i take a look around it's a bunch of tech geeks with the same same personalities same high ideology frequ high frequencies of certain types of individuals so to speak yeah like, and so at a certain point the water is just diluted to the same thoughts same ideas and same type of drive right yeah and that's what's happening. A lot of people are exiting Silicon Valley right now because it's not the same place it used to be when there was a tech boom. Yeah. There's, I think when I look on a macro level and I look at technological disruption, a lot of what Silicon Valley is doing or has been doing, I feel like you're starting to reach adoption rates that are just too poor to support the boom anymore because people, once they kind of get the thing that they like, they're going to stick to it for a while until it's like blatantly obvious, obsolete or, you know, killed off by something better. But it's not like if you just dropped the new Facebook tomorrow, you're going to get 6 billion people to sign up. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like it's Facebook is pretty much the thing right now for 28 to 40, right? That demographic is like huge on Facebook. Younger than that, I feel like Instagram is the version of Facebook. But if you look, but S how many different like types of things tried to be the Facebook or tried to be like Instagram and take an audience share? Your people aren't just gonna flip, 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 flip through yeah. technologies or through all this shit all the time. If you have something groundbreaking, if you have something revolutionary and life changing, sure, I can see it getting supported. If you're making a derivative of a thing, it's very hard now in Silicon Valley because a lot of people have kind of found their things. That if you're making a derivative of Facebook right now probably not going to work out maybe three years from now even because i think facebook is on its last legs like i'm seeing it oh yeah i'm seeing dude when they were and I, when i saw the study where they're focusing oh, on groups as yeah. being their premier offering offering of their service oh, <laughs> it was came over to forums man <laughs> you're talking about forums now so yeah like even with Microsoft and Sony having the console business and the game business mm -hmm. down over Google Stadia, mm -hmm. I still see them struggling with the marketing, simplifying the message. The same way that I go to Google Stadia and I can't figure out if I need this Founders Edition or not. They obviously want to sell me $120 worth of products before I can start. Mm -hmm. right? like that's pure money. Right. But I'm so confused. It's like, do I need this? Yeah. Is there's there's not even a bold red letter saying requirement or I promise you or not. When you get your stadia and you peel off the S sticker, it's gonna be a Chromecast. Yeah, <laughs> pretty just, much. It's like it's, it's unsold Chromecast. I don't understand in this day and age why I need the controller, right? That is that expensive. Mm -hmm. Right? Just ship me a PlayStation One controller. You can't 
you can't dig this out of the recycle bin and just give me just give me buttons and, what, and, and sticks to play with. It's I would say this so long. If you took out accelerometers and if you took out just rumble you might some games you wouldn't be able to play without the accelerometer. i can't imagine rumble being that expensive yeah now. well yeah. i mean it's you get it's two motors it's a weight it's this sure if it's not there you know what i mean it's it saves some money i think that that's one of the most sensitive components inside of those things that is like you can break your rumble. but this is where stadia really fails yeah well this is where stadia really fails like i should go on the website yeah. and it literally should said sign up now ten dollars a month yeah. start playing yeah. right that's, well, you, you, that's, do need, you do need a controller, though. Like, I, yeah, I at least but understand let's, they're selling you a controller. Sure. Uh, and, and they should package a controller as part of your free month trial. It's like it should be that cheap. Oh, damn. You, you know what I mean? That's tough. Well, uh, charge me $20 or something, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. Give me a price point that is reasonable that I don't have to basically spend half of a console yeah. to buy into because that's where you lose everybody. It's like, I thought I can just play this. Yeah. I would controller you, not required if you have a keyboard and mouse sure fair enough make it work right but this is also microsoft and sony's problem we, we talked about being able to do just that right now if you have a sony console to stream into your tablet can you stream to your tablet and stuff what do you mean like from my computer send video files to my tablet to have the tablet no no no, no no like if i play on a playstation 4 can i play off of my tablet i believe so See, I oh, I mean, we gotta look this yeah, up. It has to, it has to be able to work. If you have some sort of screen, you should be, download the app for the PlayStation Four. You go into the app with your account, and then that links your home PlayStation to whatever screen device, so that you can play that way. Okay. But what's always fascinated me is how the controller communication works, because I never looked into it. I never tried it yet. I know my PlayStation can do it. I haven't tried it, which I'm going to this weekend. Now that I'm talking about it. But that's Actually, part of no. the problem with these console makers. They're so bad with, like, just advertising their features. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I see that kind of carrying over to their streaming. How is this going to work? Because they're obviously not going to tell. They want to still sell their hardware because they're going to make those hardwares anyway. Yeah. It's going to be on store shelves. They're going to try to move those units however they can. But at the same time, they come out with, a streaming service and they're trying to equally put money behind that and tell people to get that as well so they're always split on telling people what to do yeah and that's the problem it's the problem with stadia right now people they're pointing me to getting this founders edition yeah you want to get on this get this founders edition it's like hold on i thought i can just press youtube yeah, yeah. what are you talking about i have a controller i have a microsoft controller you know what i mean i will say this there's though. not even that option it's like if you have a ready controller you can start playing now i'm not gonna lie i think the long-term brilliance in that whole like YouTube instant download play from here thing is like, I love that idea as, as somebody who creates gaming experiences and wants to have like standout memories for people who play games yeah. to the moon. I will clap for Google for that idea. Yeah. Cause like look at Mario maker, right? Like we see all these people's Mario maker levels on YouTube and we watch these, like, oh, why would you do that to a person? Right. Yeah. But now, if I want to play that, I have to like memorize some sort of stupid ass code and then type yeah, it yeah, into yeah. link to that thing in the Switch. It's a and huge because advantage. of that, I'm never gonna do it. But imagine if it was like I click the play this level button and then I'm playing it right then and there. Like I, that, it's I think that's huge. cool because discoverability is a thing that no one has been able to solve yet. Yeah. And actually, that is a step towards like, oh wow, I'm already seeing this content. It seems cool. Play now. I'm going to hit this button to play now, and now I'm in that piece of content right That now. is a killer that's feature. Dope. That's a that's killer dope. feature. That should be all you see when you get Google <laughs> Studio. That's what I mean, man. Yeah. It's like you already have that announcement that will get people to buy it. It's mm -hmm. simple. Play now. $10 a month. Yeah. Right? Uh, when you start your service, oh, a controller is required. You know, here's the extra 10, 20 bucks. If you were to buy... All 12 months of Stadia at once, I would give you the free controller. Exactly. I would do it But that the, even that was a clear messaging. Yeah. But I'm, I'm greeted with this $120 buy-in. And I was like, what? how do I not buy it? I already have a controller. Yeah, yeah. I already have a Chromecast. What What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Their messaging is so bad. And this is where, like, millennials actually have a better chance of marketing these things, you know? Sure. Whoever's coming up with these, like, barriers are, are, are so dumb it's keeping everyone out it's keeping everybody out so that's my worry with sony and microsoft is like even though they are going to come out 
with some type of like i mean they're gonna come out with their own exclusive streaming mm -hmm. uh for, for their first parties and everything but they're gonna be competing against each other but also themselves because they have a hardware that they're trying to move around to yeah. so i don't know how exactly they're gonna tie it all together to make sense out of it if i was sony or microsoft if i would be looking to do a f i would be basically preparing myself to fork one way or the other but you can't make that fork if you don't have the option of doing both so i guess that's the play to me if i put myself in sony or microsoft shoes some people believe that there's a future where we're not buying PlayStations, consoles, Xboxes anymore, right? right we're right, just right. buying access to content. I believe that wholeheartedly. I think that that's where things are going to go. Yeah. Now, in order for Sony and Microsoft to be there to even test those waters, they have to start doing some of that today. While they still have consoles, because let's say I'm wrong or let's say the industry is wrong, then they can keep doing what they've already been doing. But if it gets to a point where they see that they have to pivot or the pivot is coming, they see hardware down, streaming up, they've already invested time and technology into the streaming part, so then they know how to follow through. So when that transition point comes and they have to make the decision, they will both have data and experience on their side. Right. So that's that's the play in my eyes. If I was Sony or Microsoft, that's why I would be competing with myself technically today. Right. Because I know that I'm preparing for the future. Right. And, yeah, there's going to be a transitional period, like yeah. you mentioned, um, that they're going to compete against themselves, but they're they're situating their future uh, right now, right? Because that is what it, where it's moving. As soon as the internet gets upped and everybody has internet access because of Elon Musk launching satellites in the in, in the stars, internet rockets. yeah, I mean it's approaching that. I uh, feel like it'd be wait, fantastic, please. dude. Uh. Fox can eat it. <laughs> so that uh, concludes uh, today's episode. Thank you, everybody, for watching on twitch.tv forward slash blue underscore chance. We went through unscathed today. We yeah. actually somewhat. Hopefully the volume is good. No one sounds like a girl. Yeah. And we're... <laughs> we're always welcome people to kind of come with their opinions. And we always are constantly reading your opinions and, yeah. and, and broadcasting it as well. Thank you Twitch so much. Chat always Best always place to reach us while we're streaming live yeah if you're we're not streaming live and you want to comment you know go to our youtube.com for slash blue chance we do comment yeah, there we as read well those too. so uh anywhere else go to bluechance.com for slash merch to get some shirts support on patreon support through twitch prime subscription any of that dollars make it to our pockets just great so thank you again for everybody joining special shout out to Eki tubby who was uh became a twitch prime supporter as of yesterday so thank you very much thanks buds yeah. uh so uh we are gonna go offline and online in about five ten minutes is this correct yeah uh well we're, we're definitely getting off of this show Let's we're getting off of this show we're gonna check with our next guest to make sure that he's still on the go uh, Game Dev Unchained is coming up next. Thank you for everybody uh, that's going to be staying on. We will be back at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Hey, we'll let you know because we, um, he, our, our next yeah, guest yeah. might have some issues. So right. we're going to check. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Consider yourselves recapped.